<laughs> okay, we're live. Hello, everyone in the mind body community and everyone in my Facebook group. Uh, and hello, um, if you're on YouTube listening to us live here today, I'm Dr. Kim Duramo, uh, mind body medicine physician. Um, you know, for those of you who have been familiar with me, my work is really about how the body heals, how we support the body and healing itself. And my work as a physician is now, you know, transitioned from emergency medicine doctor to completely dedicating my career to assisting what heals the body. How do we heal? Instead of how do we fix disease? How do we make disease go away? It's such a more powerful way to approach health. So I have um, dedicated my entire platform to this. And today I have a friend of mine who is a Harvard trained physician, Dr. Uma Naidu. She is a nutritional psychiatrist. So she's a physician for mental illness and psychiatric illness, but she has a really unique take on this with um, a deep understanding of how nutrition affects the body. And she has a book that's called, This Is Your Brain on Food. And I'm really excited to be sharing this because I know for so many of us, myself included, foods affect me. You know, people, energy around me affects me very strongly. And not just the mood we're in, but the way we think or how we feel moment to moment or the real, the quality of our entire lives is really dependent on the energy um, that we're in. And so we're gonna share today about how your food can be used as medicine for mental health and for overall wellness. So I'm excited to have Dr. Naidu here today. So welcome, Uma. Thank you so much, Kim. Thanks so much for having me here. I'm excited to talk to all of you. Well, why don't you share a little bit? I, I know you've shared before with me about your background with your mother teaching you about the qualities of food and the properties of food mm -hmm. and how they affect the body. Um, that part is really fascinating to me because this wasn't just something you learned in a book, but something that's really been in your DNA. So how did you come to understand um, that and how have you used this in your in your work with others? With mental health issues? Thank you. That's a great question. You know, it did, it did start my family because it's always surrounded by food and love in a very large Indian family. I didn't actually cook initially, Kim, but I baked. Uh, my mom knew that I loved science, but as I really grew to understand spices and herbs and healthy foods, I really brought that into my practice in mental health because I felt that as I was prescribing medications, I needed to have an understanding of how I could also help my patients with side effects and other issues that come up. And that's really how I began to integrate it in that way, including my love of spices and really started to explore it in a more overt way. And that really led me down, down the road and a few diversions, but they all came together, you know, went to culinary school, started nutrition, but they came together in, in a very organic way. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it and I'm excited to share my book. I think the fascinating thing about what you've written in the book and how you've developed this part of your career in mental illness is um, most doctors, you know, we're really swamped up in the training of um, pharmaceutical medicine. And a lot of us don't have the time or energy to look outside of that for other modalities and other sources of healing. Um, so I, I really commend you for, I know it's because you care so, so deeply about humanity and about really making a difference in people's lives and that you've ventured beyond just what the the clinical training is usually about into getting culinary training which i think a lot of doctors are also like i don't have time for this whole other world and they're in one world and that ends up being right. psychiatric uh, pharmaceutical medicine right. um so how have you what have you seen i'd love to know like with different conditions, especially anxiety and depression, mm -hmm. but also other things as well, um, that has changed. Like, what have you seen right. with people who um, went more into this this route of, of using food as medicine? So, you know, I think that the the, the for me, the, the biggest finding in the work that I do clinically is that there is this real connection between the gut and the brain. So there's directly what we eat affects how we feel in, in the simplest form. And, you know, just understanding the mechanisms behind that, you know, feeding your food, uh, feed, feeding your body with the better foods, the healthier foods actually feeds the gut microbiome in a good way, mm -hmm. which means that you don't end up with inflammation or leaky gut, which can, and if you do, it, you, you could end up with brain inflammation or neuroinflammation, meaning that you could, you know, you could present to be with panic and anxiety. So in that way, I think that finding that connection and understanding that, you know, I, I think about psychiatry in a holistic 
integrated and functional way, meaning that I look for a root cause because sometimes someone may present with panic or anxiety, but when you ask them more questions, you find out they've had an 18 month history of a complete change in pattern of mm -hmm. eating mm -hmm. because of job or work stress or something like that. And when or you even antibiotics that not could be antibiotics, exactly, you know. exactly. It could be a medication like an antibiotic and antifungal, any of those agents that disrupt the gut. And so what, what they may present with in my office may not be the full situation clinically yep. Yep. and finding that out has become i think s really important and i think the second thing to say is that each person is very individualized because our gut microbiome is so unique to each of us their their plan their personalized nutritional psychiatry plan has also got to be individualized so i, I enjoy that and I, I enjoy uh you know working with that and, and trying to figure it out this is a major, major piece, um, especially in the way I've come to understand the body and health and healing and disease. Uh, yes. it's, it's about our consciousness. It's about the frequency that we're on. And the gut microbiome is a mega part of that mm -hmm. because it has a frequency. It has a consciousness. So the consciousness of you know, uh, candida or just the, the quote unquote bad bacteria, they right. have a certain frequency and right. it affects how we feel in every moment. So we think it's the mind or the brain, or I've got to just calm myself down. But then we don't realize like, well, your body is physically carrying around this low frequency consciousness of heaviness and victim and dread. And I'm not okay. That's mm -hmm. what you're feeling. So they may present yeah. it with mental health symptoms, but it can be a gut biome issue. Absolutely of the time and the uh, that's that's such a great point Kim and the other the other point is that uh, we know that the serotonin receptors more than 90 percent of them are in the gut so you know knowing that the medications we use in mental health are largely mediated through serotonin and other neurochemicals we therefore understand that if you disrupt the gut you're disrupting where your serotonin receptors are located mm -hmm. so in, in a in a natural and normal way you you are actually disrupting something that's working to help you so that, you know, when, when you go to a doctor and they want to prescribe the medication, and I do prescribe medications, I, I do also want to say that, you know, some people are severely ill, severely depressed, suicidal, psychotic, or manic, and they need a medication. You have to start with that, but you can also build in a food plan at the same time. So it's not one or the other. You can do it together, but those individuals who are that sick can't go to food first, but they can, they can then develop a proper plan with us to, to figure that part out. But... Um, you know, what you eat is, is going to affect those receptors. And I know there's also a lot of documented evidence and in, in people with very, very severe mental illness, severe, uh, you know, um, anxiety, depression, yes, but also things like um, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, schizoaffective. Schizophrenia that have yeah. had major transition mm -hmm. and shift with healing um, mm -hmm. using an approach like this, even just shifting the gut biome or just altering. Exactly. Um, diet. So we tend to think like pharmaceuticals are like the be all end all. That's the most powerful, but Hey, let's right. do the other thing. Know that the science has actually shown that this is just as powerful, if not more powerful to assist healing. So, um, so what have you seen for patients who've worked with you and applied the principles that you're teaching in the book? Well, I, uh, you know, I, I have seen some, some, so I've shared a lot of examples in the book, but I've seen, seen people who stick to a plan, who really work with me on how can you make these changes and embrace healthy whole foods, you know, the basics of a good, good eating plan. Um, and then, you know, we throw in those, the, the little extras that we've learned through the research, like the, the healthy spices, you know, understanding, you know, every doctor tells you to eat a salad, but why, you know, why is it important? You know, what is this, when people understand the connection and not just, oh my God, the doctor's telling me to eat more leafy greens, yep. then they, they make that connection to the gut and how the healing can happen. And that's where I see change happening is when people adopt even one healthy habit and they start to feel better. Yep. That's usually something that makes it stick and then they want to do more of it. Understanding uh, the food and how the food has power in the body, what that power is, is such a key, key point. I know in my relationship with food, mm -hmm. the way I think about a papaya is totally yeah. different. It's right. not just, it's a fruit with these sugars in it or some vitamins. Right. It's like, no, there's actually a quality mm -hmm. of the, um, the nature of that food. If it's a living thing, the food is mm -hmm. a living thing. Mm -hmm. It has a, um, even the spices, they mm -hmm. have an effect um, on your entire body. And you know, we've been talking about the effect on your gut microbiome, which I agree is a major, major 
component of the, the mental health equation. And, and these foods I know also have effect um, just on the overall energy of your body. Like yes. the way we think of foods in the Indian tradition, like turmeric is warming. I know for me being like a high energy Vada kind of person, when I learned that and stopped right. eating a lot of raw food, I was eating cold food and raw food. This changed my life. Like I had joint right. issues and inflammation mm -hmm. and pain. Mm -hmm. And then I learned about like heating foods, like heavy, uh, heavier foods, which I thought, well, those are bad for you. Turmeric and certain spices. Right. And, and I'd never understood that before. I love it. I love it. You're absolutely right. And, you know, Ayurvedic principles come a lot into how we think about food. I'm not a practitioner. I wish I knew, knew more than that and practiced. But I know some of the science behind it, like you're sharing. And I think that, you know, for someone who, say, doesn't cook with turmeric, I say add it to a smoothie, add it to a soup. There's a way that you can have that and also just always add a pinch of black pepper. Quarter teaspoon of turmeric, pinch of black pepper, because the black pepper activates the curcumin, which is the active ingredient in turmeric. So that that's my that's always my little tip with, uh, with turmeric. And what would they want to use that for? So is that when so, people are in that high energy anxiety. Exactly. So at the good studies on turmeric in both depression, anxiety across the board, but those are the two major disorders where they it's particularly helpful. But Think about the effect of turmeric and realize that because of its antioxidant, anti-inflammatory effects, as well as many others, it's going to help your brain in that way. So it actually is helpful in other disorders as well. So for, I want to just look at, um, and, and where can they get the book? Because that's, I want to resource people with that right off the bat. <laughs> yes, it's available wherever books are sold. It's on my website as well, which is book dot uma naidu md dot com okay and i'll put that in. <coughs> um md dot com great awesome so thank you what other um it, it, and let's start with the turmeric thing because i i really like like cooking with right. it in my smoothie you can, tea, you can do tons of things with it yeah i do like golden milk at night i've recommended right. it to my brother-in-law he has right. um, pre-diabetes what would you use this for in the mental health world so I think that it depends. So we also have recipes in the book that go with each chapter. I think that it's probably if you're waking up anxious, if you're waking up with that, you know, pit of fear in your stomach, especially with all the things going on, you know, make it into a tea in the morning. It, it, it's easy to get, you know, crushed turmeric, you know, powdered turmeric, add a pinch of black pepper. You know, uh, sort of, I like a little drop of honey because it can be better. Add it to a tea if you choice. Now there's several teas that you can buy that, that have turmeric and black pepper. That's a great way to start. It's also sort of calming to your body. It can be calming even at night. But it also, there's, there's interestingly, more recently, there have been studies around its antiviral properties as well. So I say, you know, if you can do one thing that hits several targets, anxiety, depression, your immunity, why not? And we also know so much of our immune system is in the gut. So, you know, again, we go back to the to our old friend, the gut-brain axis. Power. It's so, so powerful for um, renormalizing the whole body. And, exactly. I, and I love people that, like, especially in the community uh, who are in my community and what I'm yeah. sharing, to have, like, physical tools to use to anchor in the energies of um grounding into mm -hmm. a new consciousness. I choose myself fully. I embrace my life. These mm -hmm. grounding foods are really a big part of that, like in a complimentary way. I've encouraged people to not try to fight disease and be in this rampage of fear. I've got to make this happen. Um, but instead to, to embrace what's here, anxiety, fear, depression, grief, um, so that those energies no longer crystallize in the body and they move. And we've seen with some of these foods, like what you're sharing in the book, that it assists that very process that your mind body system is already trying to do for you. Right. Um, so, so what are some of the other like spices in particular or, or foods in particular that are right. kind of power foods like that? Great. So, you know, the other the other foods that we talk about, but I also like to prov provide plant-based sources of these, you know, we talk about omega-3s. Omega-3 fatty acids are really hit the high note on anxiety and depression very consistently. Um, and 
then we also talk about prebiotic foods and probiotic foods because really what I'd like to what what I'd like to provide to people is a healthy whole foods diet and rather encourage that they eat foods that are prebiotic that will be food you know for your gut bacteria and then probiotics which provide those cultures and those bacteria to your gut but you can get those through food sources um, so I, I I like that combination. And I also like to suggest, you know, rich sources of fiber. And you get fiber from fruits, vegetables. You mentioned papaya earlier. So fruit, vegetables, you know, um, beans, nuts, seeds, legumes, because those actually provide natural fiber to you, which is probably the best thing you can do for those gut bacteria. So when you start with those kinds of principles, you, you're building almost say you've gone through a difficult time during this during this phase and you you've kind of gotten picked up some unhealthy eating habits one way to re kind of restart that and just employ some basic eating plans is bring back the fruit vegetables beans nuts all the things that bring back fiber to your gut because that nourishes your gut and then you add in things like omega-3 fatty acids through pl uh, plant sources which would be ala sources or you know fatty fish sources and then the prebiotics and probiotics, all of those things. And then, you know, try to avoid the added sugars and the, the candy and the ice cream. But bring bring it back to that. And what I like to say to people is try to employ some healthy habits that you feel you can do. Because if you try to change five things at the same time, they don't stick. And, and have one day in the week, which is a treat day. If there's something you're craving, rather than go on with that feeling, which we know psychologically will work against you, you know, have that ice cream. But have it within, you know, on a day that you choose, correct at the next meal to healthy eating and have a, a an appropriate portion. You know, I, I'm not saying go, go eat the tower of ice cream, but ha have a serving so you, you have that treat. Yeah, it's smart to um, add things in <clears throat> that really are nutritious and, and uh, support and strengthen the body yes. first. And then, yes. you know, cravings go down and your body changes. Right. And then exactly. it's like, oh, I, I naturally will let go of this and this and that that aren't serving. And that's what people say. That's an excellent point because as they adopt that and they're not having the ice cream every evening at dinner, but maybe once a week, they find that they're not craving it. And they're finding other ways that they can enjoy a healthy, you know, make a healthy dessert that's different, you know. So it's, it's absolutely true. I think it's a, I know you're really relatable, especially like as a woman doctor and just, um, being the kind of person that you are, you're very loving and caring. And I yeah. am really excited to share this book with other people because I think there's a lot out there of, of science and information, but if it's not coming through the heart, it's just more information. And then it's like, oh, I got to read this diet book. Oh, I got to read that thing. And especially I think a lot of times it's like, oh, another doctor telling me what to do. Absolutely. But like, you're coming from a beautiful place with this. And I know it's um, always really relatable what, what you're sharing and something people will oh, thank really, you. Really, really well. So thank I want you. to hit that link again. I did list it. Book.uma naidomd.com. Naidu is N-A-I-D-O-O M-D.com. And they can find the book, This Is Your Brain on Food, or go and get it at Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, do you have some great stories or um, people that you've worked with and what what you've seen, especially things I know, like sometimes someone really, really severe, and you're like, even that person could have a turnaround. Um, yeah. That's a great story for people to relate to. Absolutely. So I've definitely, you know, treated people with severe mental illness. And what I've done in those instances is work with other clinicians, sort of a team of people. And I would provide the nutritional psychiatry input because that person might, might need more than just those nutritional interventions that I want to provide. And, you know, I've seen the fact that we can support people through better eating habits. I mean, as you know, Kim, I, I don't need to tell you that our hospitals need to improve food. So if someone's in the hospital and they're not well and they, you know, post cardiac surgery and other things, they may not get the tray of food they should be eating because we need we need to change that and evolve that. Yeah, it's a pharmaceutical system. model. It's not a nutrition model. It's not exactly. a model. It's not. There's a lot of ways we can update our and are updating through like the work you're doing and other others are doing. But yeah, there's not gonna be that kind of healing in that instance. In that instance. So, you know, individuals like that, we work in the team approach, but I've also seen people who come into my office that don't meet, you know, we have this, uh, we have the DSM-4 or 5TR, which is the classification in psychiatry. And to be completely honest, not everyone falls into that. 
people have symptoms, they don't feel well, they can't function, but you know, they, they come and they, I call it sort of a sub syndromal, um, they, they're just not feeling great. And sometimes it's really anxiety that's driving some of this and might be other symptoms as well as we go through different disorders in the book. But that's where food can be super helpful. You know, making these tweaks, sticking with the plan, making and including things like, you know, the mind-body connection, Kim, you know, you, you're, you, you know about that. So mindfulness, you know, gratitudes, um, you know, thinking about what type of movement suits you. If someone's very depressed and anxious, they may, may not be able to go to the gym. Maybe they start with something that's more gentle. Maybe it's yoga, tai chi, or something that gets them moving and starting to feel better. And it's putting together that plan and nutrition is one of the cornerstones of that plan as well. Do you have um, anything else you like specific things uh, about the book or that inspired the book or any other particular things that you want to share? So I, I feel like the book was very much inspired by, by my work. And I think that, that if someone, for example, has symptoms of OCD and or has a family member with that, they can pick up the book and look at that chapter because the way that we broke it down is we shared the science in a meaningful way. Then we provide a food list of things you should embrace and foods you should avoid. So, you know, you can help a friend, a family member, yourself if you want to. And then if, if that's what you need from the book, there are lots of other resources in there. But if you say, feel you want something for depression, there's that too. This is really smart because I think, um, just like I talked about the little tweaks we can make by like adding in two or three yeah. foods in a day and, and maybe you don't change anything else. That's also an easy tweak is like, oh, this one food is triggering my depression or That's activating right. my anxiety or right. making me, you know, skits out about whatever. Right. If I avoid this one food, I can really see the power in that. So I, right. I really love that you are right. giving people that guidance because I think there's not a lot we've understood about foods beyond just here's how many calories, here's the fats, here's the sugars. And then great, you have like the, the vitamins and, and the minerals to maybe aware, uh, you're aware of that too. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think we've really just barely tapped the surface in having a relationship with food and a communication with food and people mm -hmm. who are really intuitive and energy center, uh, energy sensitive, like myself, um, it can be easier to like have mm -hmm. the awareness of what this food's going to do in my body. Right. Right. You read like Anthony Williams, medical medium. He has really tapped into the mm -hmm. frequency of that food and what that food can offer. I think mm -hmm. we're really beginning to, to get into to understand the that. layer yeah. of understanding how mm -hmm. foods affect the body. And your book is Absolutely. a big, big contribution to that and to people having a, a new way of, uh, of, of relating with foods and, and using foods for healing. Thank you, Kim. You know, one of the things I will say, and I think you made another good point, which is, you know, we it, it, people don't know, open open a book and say, don't eat this and, and eat that. It's, you know, it's, it, it's hard enough to get through current times without having more restrictions. So one of the things that I think the book will hopefully do for you is also explain why, why we shouldn't eat the bad foods. It links it to the science. So yeah. you know, I was reading recently how a study of trans fats in the diet actually enhances anger and aggression. So, you know, I think that, that, that processed foods and the extra sugared foods or the, you know, foods with additives, dyes, preservatives that we find on our shelf stable, you know, supermarket, uh, in the supermarkets that are shelf stable are the things that, that may actually cause us problems. But now the study is linking the fact that if you have those trans fats, you may be more aggressive or you may have anger issues, you know. So I think that these things are not just things we, we talk about without evidence now. You yeah, know, there's, there's a growing body of evidence. And it's that. also a really good key in, because a lot of things we learn about food are like, don't eat this so that over the next 20 years, you don't develop atherosclerosis or heart disease. Right. You're like, what's it doing today? Whereas That's if it. you're like, whoa, I feel particularly overwhelmed with mm -hmm. anger, Right. Let me justice and stop eating the junk food that has these trans fats. Let mm -hmm. me cook for a few days homemade meals. Wow, mm -hmm. it's better. And making that choice about a particular food where you're like, how will this food affect me? If you're in the moment, because your mental health yeah. is actually giving you moment to moment awareness yes. Yes. about the, the things you're doing and choosing and the foods you're eating. So Absolutely. it's not 20 years from now when you may or may not develop a disease. It's over the next 12 to 24 hours how yes. does this affect me and what do I feel? And you can begin to notice. And with the education you're bringing in this book, they can have a little bit of a deeper insight into, 
oh, this might be why I feel so, you know, anxious and ungrounded. Right. Because of that bad food around me. Exactly. Or, and then have a different awareness of the choices we're making moment to moment mm -hmm. with food. And I like what you said about moment to moment because it turns out that research shows us you can change, start to change your gut, your gut microbiome in a day. So you can change it negatively as much as you can change it positively. So, you know, it's our choice. We can either go for the uh, the bad foods or, or start to embrace more healthy food. And, that, and it's not easy. I'm not saying it because I've perfected it. I'm saying it because I know it's a challenge, but yeah. the, the science is there. You know, you make those bad choices, the gut bacteria, you know, start getting disrupted. This is a big deal because our gut microbiome makes up, is it like 85% of our biomass? It, it's, it might actually, so I've heard different studies, but it's almost like some studies say that we are more bacteria than we are human cells. You know, if you look at it technically, the so you're like the conscious yeah. effect in your mind and your yeah. body moment to moment to moment is the number one most powerful part of it is the consciousness of your mm -hmm. bio frequency mm -hmm. of yeah. that guy, gut biome. Yeah. I've helped people shift their gut biome by shifting their consciousness, which mm -hmm. 100% has been shown to like they no longer have Lyme disease, they no longer mm -hmm. carry Epstein-Barr mm -hmm. virus, they no longer have yeast overgrowth. Mm -hmm. and it's also hugely essential to feed the new nutrient dense, you know, the the, the positive microbiome, exactly. grow a positive okay. microbiome. And, yeah. You know, what we do to do that is going to contribute to how to we the feel, the thoughts we have in each moment, yeah. how we yeah. see the world, how we use our intelligence. Do we have energy? Do we not? So I think you're right on with um, with feeding the, the gut biome and addressing it from that perspective first. You know, and I think that people um, over time, you know, they're always getting told by doctors what to do. And, and I understand that. I don't like to be told what to do. So I get that. But here, here's the thing, you know, people tend to know what they should do for heart disease or for high cholesterol. But people really don't know, other than medications or therapies, what to do for mental health. What to do and for food, mental health. And yep. food is one way. And understanding the gut, and exactly as you described, understanding that connection is one way in, you know, to starting to feel better. So I, I think I think if I were to if I had to bring it to one message, it would be that. Beautiful. We we have a couple questions here. Someone's asking, do you use fresh turmeric? And someone else is saying, how about turmeric essential oil? So, you know, I think that, uh, so this, the, what we looked at is, is ingesting turmeric, so eating it in some sort of food form. The fresh fruit is perfectly fine. You know, the dry spice, the one that's ground in the bottle is probably more potent because it's all crushed from that. Using the root is absolutely perfect. Actually, it's delicious in tea. So if you like that flavor and you use the root, equally good. Um, I think that, you know, when it comes to the essential oil, if that's something, say, that you you have found that the antioxidant or anti-inflammatory effect for you, especially if you have pain or discomfort is helpful, absolutely. But we really didn't look at the turmeric as, um, uh, I, I believe it's a it's a healthy option, but it's not a, that's not a food. Um, you know, so I would, I would think maybe get a little bit of the spice and try it out that way okay. with the, with the black pepper. Oh, and I, I never heard about that with black pepper, but I know that's yeah. also warming, obviously, like a spice. Yeah. So for um, for those who are, you know, that flighty, anxious, high energy, yeah. like me, like I've been all my life in the past, especially, that's uh, a smart thing yeah. that I've used as well. Absolutely. The, the black pepper basically activates the curcumin and helps the absorption and makes it more effective for you. So if you're going to do something, you know, that will just only enhance the effect for you. Any last uh, thoughts before we complete? Um, so firstly, thank you for, for the energy and the love that you bring to this field and what you're doing, um, because I appreciate that in the world as well. And I thank you for that. Um, I, I think my, my parting message would be that I my, the spirit of writing this was really to help more people see that there are more options and that um, a lot of, our, a lot of the, the, you know, doctors are missing nutrition education. There's a huge gap in our medical schools and we know that. We try to learn it through other ways, but I, I think that it's it's the gap I want to fill is for those people who are looking for more ways to feel better. Always go through a doctor, but know that there are ways and through food that you can embrace foods and then see the foods that may be making you not feel good and see if they're on that list and maybe start to cap, cut back on them. Someone's asking, is this, is this book helpful for someone with PMDD? 
I don't know what PM. Yes. Yeah, so that's uh, yes. I it, so so that's part of you know, I would consider it you know a spectrum of of depression and mood. So yes, you would find uh, what is PM? Would find, but, um, I think she's talking about she or she is talking about uh, post uh, uh, dysphoric disorder uh, post. Okay. Post menstrual. Uh, Postmenstrual. No, I was going to say menopausal. I don't know why. No, postmenstrual. Okay. This, this one. Yeah. Oh, so you're saying yes? It it is. Yes, like exactly. Because we, you know, those those basically, uh, those I I would consider that part of sort of mood symptoms, and so you would find some guidance in that chapter. Sandy Tetrell said, I ordered the book. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for doing that. That is very good of you. Thanks. Oh, and hello to Kyle from Quantum Healing Collective. I want to say hi to everybody who's here live, Sherry and, um, oh, we've got lots of people from all over. Jen, Kiara, <laughs> Michelle, Katie, Christine, anybody I missed, hello, Liam. And hello, everybody. I know in the um, in the Mind Body community, it doesn't show your name. It just says Facebook user, but hello to okay. you. You know them. Awesome. Yes. So to everyone who is listening as well, um, thanks for being a part of this. We would love to hear from you. You can actually comment on the YouTube video or in the Facebook, and we will see those comments later. So um, we love hearing from you. The book can be ordered at um, book.umanaidoomd.com. And it's U-M-A-N-A-I-D-O-O-M-D. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of other really great resources. I know you've got beautiful things on your website and just sharing a little bit more about what you're doing in general. So um, that's a great resource for people to plug into there as well. And I just I just want to correct that. It was premenstrual dysphoric disorder. I just like yeah. Yes. There's a lot of uh, weird there's acronyms. So, there's so many acronyms. I was like, oh, no. There's more when you're like, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, so <laughs> premenstrual dysphoric. Disorder, disorder, which so it relates uh, to mood. And, that's tricky. Having you know discomfort um, and a, a sort of a low mood before you create everything. Yeah, and I think we're all so much affected by the cycles um, in our body as women, but men are also um, affected by even like the moon cycles and a lot of things that can come. You know, so um, being aware or even keeping like a journal of just your own awareness of tuning yes. in. Then you can look at like, huh, I'm noticing I frequently feel overwhelmed with grief or despair or anger or just right. irritated a lot. And then you right. have awareness of it to see like, oh, what might be something that can contribute to releasing that? And what might be something that I'm noticing contributing to that that I can... Uh, that I can tweak or change, you know, you're, you're so right about that. For example, one of the things that I've come to understand through just through all of this is that, you know, poor sleep affects uh, chronic chronic insomnia and poor sleep affects our hormones, but they specifically affect our hunger hormones. And we, we you know, when we start to have cravings and discomfort and, and starting to eat the wrong things, it might also be because our hunger hormones are disrupted from insomnia and poor sleep. Yeah. And then what happens is our body doesn't know when we're full and we keep eating more portions of something that we ordinarily wouldn't. So I think that that's another way in which, you know, hormones, I mean, people are very, very I think more familiar with, with stress and cortisol and how that access works, but they all feed in to our eating patterns, but they also feed into our mental health. I want you to see if you can um, share a little bit about sleep and what things can help people with sleep. Sure. But we have a question from Denmark. Can this be ordered via any European websites or what do they do? So, if um, and I, so I know that the book is in several countries. I think it'll release at different times. Uh, the countries that I know of and the release dates in the US, um, August 4th, in the UK, September 10th. Um, so I'm not sure if you have access to the UK to get it through there. It'll be called The Food Mood Connection in the UK, just a different title, same cover and same book. Um, and I, I don't know in Europe where to get it from uh, specifically, but you probably want to try an Amazon source because that might be the, the fastest way. Uh, and we'll, we, as we get the new book covers in the different countries, we are going to put them up on my website. 
Is it the food mood connection? Because the um, this is your brain on food. Is that more the American? This exactly. Is the that's that's exactly yeah. it, Jim. Uh, well, so <laughs> someone else is asking about what are the best supplements for anxiety. I definitely want to look at the sleep piece because I think this is something yes. many of us. Absolutely. So let's 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 go to sleep. So it turns out that tart cherry juice um, is actually very helpful for sleep. Cherry juice. Tart tart cherry juice. Tart. Exactly. So I'm, you know, I, I know that the ones that one would buy may have a lot of added sugars, but it turns out you can get frozen tart cherries and you can actually make up a little bit of juice, juice uh, yourself. I also, um, you know, so I think that that good sleep also starts with sort of proper hygiene, sleep hygiene and understanding the things you should avoid. Like, you know, the fact that tea has a lot of uh, ingredients like uh, caffeine and tannins that keep you awake. So it also starts with that. But I think I missed a question that you asked. Did someone ask another question? Uh, anxiety? Yes, and then someone's right. also asking about food sensitivities. Thanks, Christine, right. for bringing that to my attention. Right. So, so question. Right. So I think, I think with, the, with food sensitivities, if, if you've spoken to your doctor about foods that you just can't tolerate, then where you might get, might get some guidance from the book is especially the, the foods to avoid for certain conditions because you may or may not know that depending on what your food sensitivities are. When it comes to anxiety, you know, I, I, I'm not against supplements. I, I think people, as long as they're running it by their doctors so that your doctor knows what's on your list of prescriptions, if you take medications, what, what the interactions may be. One example of this is, you know, we, we, we consider grapefruit a healthy food, but grapefruit actually interacts with a lot of prescribed medications that people have. So you, So the reason I'm careful is that I want you to go through your doctor if, if you're taking a supplement, just make sure that they know what it is. Um, and so, so for anxiety, it turns out that, that again, you know, we're going to come back to turmeric, actually helps anxiety. Trials have shown that vitamin D and sources of um, foods with vitamin D, as well as omega-3s, um, help with anxiety. So that's, that's a good way to start. Some very recent studies showed that um, uh, a keto diet also helped, but we need a little bit more evidence on that. So omega threes for me, my first thought is to just take my omega three supplement more regularly. But what foods like salmon and so fatty fish? So salmon, mackerel, um, tuna, uh, anchovies, things like that. Sardines have. I would rather eat a whole bunch of sardines than just take <laughs> the supplement. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, there are food sources. Uh, for, uh, you know, for vegetarians, it would be look at. So omega threes has have different diff different different fatty acids in them. But the ones from uh, plant-based sources are things like, you know, chia seeds, flax seeds, um, hemp seeds, uh, walnuts, and, and, a, and a few other things. So oh, you, yeah. you can, you know, if you're vegetarian or vegan, there are other ways. The, the percentage that gets translated to brain health is less because the truth is that the omega-3s in seafood are, the, are the, 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 not so much the best source, but the source that really gets to your brain mm -hmm. to help you. Um, so then there are a lot of other people with, um, in my community with autoimmune disease, um, a lot of different inflammatory conditions that, that I know are related to like stress, fight or flight. And someone's specifically asking about, um, mastocystosis. Should you share a little bit, uh, about any of those kinds of inflammatory conditions? I know we're talking about mental health and your mental health mm -hmm. expert. Right. Do you have any thoughts on that? So, you know, um, I, I can't speak specifically to that condition, but what I can speak to is the inflammation. And it, it, it basic, basically when we have a state of inflammation, whether it's an autoimmune cause and other, one of the ways that I know I've seen improvement, and I'll give you an example of this, someone who saw a positive effect of the pandemic was uh, an executive who noticed a significant improvement just by eating home-cooked meals and having to prepare foods on his own because of the pandemic, and also noticed an improvement in an inflammatory skin rash over the period of this time. So, you know, had chosen not to go get it treated at the beginning of the pandemic, couldn't, couldn't get to see a dermatologist, and noticed just by eating healthy whole foods, using anti-inflammatory foods in their diet, including things like turmeric and black pepper, including foods that that has rich in antioxidants. Black pepper, that, that those would be a good anti-inflammatory food. That's an ex excellent anti-inflammatory food. And then eating the rainbow. So all the different colors, the phytonutrients bring back antioxidants to your body. So those types of things are really good general principles to set up a, a whole foods healthy diet. 
and then the fiber, like I mentioned earlier. So I'll, I haven't treated someone with that condition, but these are some principles you could start with. Okay, we have one other question and then we're gonna have to complete, but do we speak a little bit to foods for depression? I know this would be something that's really helpful and Wanda is asking specifically and sure. I think everyone will benefit from that. Sure, so there's a long list in the book, but I'll, 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 teach, I'll touch on the high points. So omega-3 fatty acids, which is you know the fish that we mentioned, fatty fish basically. Um, then we think about prebiotic foods, and prebiotic foods include things like um, the onion family. So onions, leeks, garlic, um, also things like Jerusalem artichoke, um, asparagus, those are those actually provide food for the good bacteria in your gut. Then probiotic foods can include if you have dairy, then look for, for um, you know dairy unsweetened, unfruited, yogurts with active culture is kefir and fermented foods. So fermented foods are super excellent for the gut and provide, um, provide again, bringing you back into a good balance. So probiotic foods, fermented foods, and then, you know, we go to um, healthy whole grains, um, as well as bringing back the sources of fiber, which I mentioned, and why. Because you're bringing back that positive balance to the gut, you're reducing the inflammation, and you're bringing back antioxidants that way. So, you know, fiber rich foods that include fruits, vegetables, uh, beans, nuts, legumes, seeds that all feed the gut in the right way. And then, and, of course, and you said uh, artichoke juice? Uh, J uh, Jerusalem artichoke. Jerusalem, Jerusalem it's, artichoke it's, it's, is, a, is a prebiotic food. Yes. How do they, how do, oh, just the juice, Jerusalem artichoke. The actual, the actual vegetable, yeah. Is that the kind that when I get that's a floured up thing and you peel it off and eat it? No, no, it looks a little bit more like a tuba. It's a smaller, smaller root. It, it just, it just called that. It's a type I of like it's just you got, um, recipes in there because I would have no idea what to do with it. But I'm gonna. Right, but, but other things are dandelion greens. If you ever see greens, but they say dandelion greens, it's a great prebiotic. Um, so we, we have lists of uh, those foods as well in the book because it's you're not saying you know, the biggest thing for depression is shifting the gut microbiome. I, that, I, 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 I hate to say, but that's what it comes down to based on what the studies have shown us. Also, including things like the omega threes because that it has a very positive direct impact, impact on your brain, okay. and you know those those basic but base basic building blocks. But then there's a lot there's a lot more you'll find. For example, Kim, the spice saffron has several positive effects on depression that research has shown. Um, the only issue with it is that it's, an, it's a very expensive spice and the amount that you need, when we go through that in the book, the amount that you need may be too much to consume in a day. So, you know, that may be one thing you want to speak to your doctor about a supplement or, but there's a lot of good, good evidence on that. Okay, and Ellen is asking, is this available as an audio book? Uh, yes, it, it's releasing as an audiobook as well. And I think with the audiobook, you get um, there's some, the, I know they're doing a little gift with each thing. So, um, uh, I, I, so yes, it's all releasing at that time. Okay. Be cool. audio. Well, thank you so much. Thank you thank for you, Kim. sharing and thank you for coming today You're and sharing a, this. I'm glad we could do it. You are such a source of love and light for your patients. So, I thank you for having me. All right, lots of love. So Take Dr. Care. Uma Naidu, Naidu um, <laughs> you can find the book at book.umanaidumd.com. Naidu is N-A-I-D-O-O. -O. Oh, I've got to alter that because I put only one O. <laughs> so be careful when you enter it. Uma, <laughs> N-A-I-D-O-O-M-D.com. That is the correct book link. Um, but yeah, share your questions. If you're listening to the recording, we'll tune back in and and try to assist in what's coming up for you. And you can go and get the book. It's so can they order now and it's available as of yes. the 4th of August. Yes, it'll be, it'll be shipped on the 4th. Exactly. Okay, well, I'll email this so that more people can um, you know, receive this and they'll be able to order it then. Awesome. All right, thank, thank you so much. much everyone. Thank you. I love you. I've taken most of the summer not doing my weekly live. So um, it's really good to see everyone and connect. And I love you and I've been having an amazing, journey this summer. So I'll be back very soon in, in the fall and be sharing even more love and wisdom. Awesome. All right. Bye, Uma. Thank Lots you so much.